together. Right, yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was about, <clears throat> one of my earliest memories was my uh, older sisters, who were 11 years older than I, uh, and 12 years older than I, gave me a present of this beautiful book that was like about this big. It was a fairy tale book. Uh -huh. And it had this beautiful, uh, these beautiful illustrations. And the cover illustration was colored, but the inside was, I think, charcoal mm -hmm. drawings. Mm -hmm. And I spent so many hours with that book, and then I just had to color. <laughs> Did you get the book? For that? No, nobody ever found out. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so young, I was very dismayed that I couldn't stay within the lines because I wanted to, you know, create mm -hmm. well, more beauty in that yeah, book, yeah. that drawing. And instead, you know, I was like my little hands were trying to yeah. to stay within the lines, and I didn't have the motor skills to do it. So, so can you segue into your picture? Okay, um, let's see. Let me see where it is. Oh, here is a photo of me when, uh, about the time, well, it, this was taken my first school picture. And, uh, you look so serious. I was a serious kid. Oh, that's serious. I don't know. Yeah, oh. very serious. Very, um, beautiful. Old person. You know, it's funny because I have memories uh, that oh. aren't very different from mm -hmm. how I think now. You know, uh -huh. I, I, I didn't I don't I didn't think of myself as a kid. You know, I thought my of myself as a tiny person. And um very um I wouldn't say helpless, but you know, the idea that once I got bigger then I would have more control over my my um but your siblings world. were much, were older, do you think that was part of it? Um, it could be. I don't know. I think I was just oriented towards adults more than children. There weren't um, children around where we lived too much. And um, I spent a lot of time alone. Oh. So, um, mm -hmm. But it's funny, uh, Ruth, that you mentioned the ears because when I see this photo, the first thing I think is my hair is so short. And this was in the 50s. And, you know, now this looks like a perfectly normal photo, but in yeah. the 50s, little girls did not have short no. hair. No. And I was, I used to wander around a lot by myself, and everyone thought I was a boy. Oh, and it really yeah. upset me, because I never, unlike a lot of little girls, you know, I've heard a lot of mm. women say that when they were little girls, they wanted to be little boys. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a little girl. I was very invested in being feminine. <laughs> And um, I got stuck with this short haircut, and it was... Uh, well, it's interesting, because you always wear dresses. I don't think well, I, I, I think I it probably think it, relates yeah. back to being... Uh, everyone thought of me as a boy. And, you know, it's weird how children have that, um, mm -hmm. you know, sense of identity and want to be right. And your hair honored. is long. Oh, boy, you bet. And the reason <laughs> it was cut off was because it was so unmanageable, and my mother just thought, you know, it's easier to deal with it if it's short. Yeah. So... Yeah. So, but you had your ear problem and I had my hair problem. So I think that's something that girls, you know, we we get this stigma for something that's kind of bent out of proportion. Well, I thought I was a chunk, a chunker, and I am still uncomfortable with my shoulders and my upper arms. I don't like showing them particularly, and that comes from childhood. Yeah, huh. interesting. And the way I was looked at. So yeah. you know what? I also <laughs> remember that you told me when you looked at my picture. You went home and went into the attic to find pictures of yourself because you didn't remember yourself looking happy, and that I looked happy in that picture. Do you remember saying that to me? I do. I I think I I was, I I don't know if it was happy so much as I I just was a really serious kid, mm -hmm. you know. And I think it's funny because I'm not serious at all now. I think mm -mm. I got all that serious stuff out of me, you know. <laughs> as I got older, then I learned how to be less serious. But I was. Um, um, I wandered around. I was very involved in nature. We lived by the beach, so I mm -hmm. went down to the beach every day. And that mm -hmm. was, I was a real nature kid, you know, and, and not a lot of interaction with uh, people. So um, my, my two older sisters had li were living with my grandmother and grandfather um, during that period of time. So, mm -hmm. so I had my books and yeah. the beach and... Why did they not live at home with you? We had lived in Oregon, and when they we moved down to California, uh, they couldn't adjust to the. They were in junior high. They could not adjust to the. Um, Hard age. It was Harbor High, which 
is the heart of Newport Beach and is very status oriented, very affluent mm -hmm. community. And and where we moved, we're in Oregon. It was a small town, and you know people were more down home kind of. And it was very difficult for my sisters at that age to yeah. to um, assimilate into the culture. Right. Mm -hmm. So they moved back with my grandparents, and I stayed down in in Southern California, which I loved because oh, I love the, the water climate and, and, and the yeah. water. I, right. The water, the. In fact, there's a photo of me at the beach with my grandfather. That he came down to visit, and he he. I remember this day. He went swimming with me, and that was. <laughs> I've always loved the water. Yeah. That's some of my earliest memories are. Well, one of the pictures I include in the book is me standing on a diving board. We went to this pool that looked like a lake, mm -hmm. and I would I ha I have visions of when I would jump into the water when I learned to jump off that diving board. Same thing. Right. Very yeah. early memories of water and how much it meant. That's to me. Yeah. Could we go into what happened for you reading this book, any of you, or what came up for you? Um, well, my mother was very sickly um, from the time I was born, and uh, my dad was the veterinarian uh, lead doctor in the South St. Paul Stockyards which just closed mm. a few weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I went online and saw the auctioneers and the people that I grew up with. And my dad took me to work, uh, maybe not every day, I remember frequently. And I would ride his shoulders and uh, go in and out of all the cattle cars and the pigs and so on the first time. <laughs> My mother uh, took me on a train. Dad was outside on the platform saying goodbye to us. I was about two, and we were going to see relatives in Montana. And I stood on the seat, I've been told, and screamed my head off and said, I thought we were going to ride with the piggies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know humans <laughs> took trains. <laughs> so, uh, but I, w I was thinking how many fathers were the caregivers of their daughter or children? More likely their son and I being the only child, I was it. And I was a lot like dad. Looked a lot like Dad. Well, it's interesting yeah. because my mother was also sickly. I know. But my father was absent. He I was know. always working, so I really didn't have anybody. Well, you had yeah. a caregiver in the Yes, home. I had a caregiver whom, whom right. I adored. Right. Absolutely adored. And That's we had a caregiver for Mother, but not ever for me. Not for me, uh, which is interesting. It was mm -hmm. Dad. And mm -hmm. as I grew up, Dad did everything with me. Went to the school, went to the plays. I remember only one outing with my mother in my entire life, other than going to church and to um, her sister's home, which was in, on our block. Uh, as I look back, I think mother probably was phobic as well as ill, mm -hmm. but she just didn't even go to the grocery store. Goodness, boy, that's, no. very, that's very Or buy her clothing. Dad and I bought her clothing. So Dad was my caregiver, and, I, and I've been thinking about that. How rare. In it the is 30s. It is. This, it he is. was born in 37, so we're talking 30s and 40s. Well, you're a and very independent born. person. Do you yes. think it has to do? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But Mother quit teaching Sunday school, and, and I remember the letter. She said, somewhere I failed with Ruth. Oh, and uh, so those are memories that have come back mm -hmm. uh, due to our looking at photos and uh, reading the book. I don't know if any of you will have thoughts on this, but what mattered for me most about writing this was finding that little girl that I had lost, that curious, delighted, happy child, and she's come back to me, and I just wonder if any of you felt you had lost parts of yourselves over the years that you've thought about from reading this? Not really, because of my relationship with my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, although, while I was looking at the photographs, I found a diary that I don't know that I've read before, or it's been many, many years, decades. It was written by my mother the first year and some of the second year of mm -hmm. my life. And she really loved me. She was very... Uh, 
very thrilled to be a mother, mm-hmm. and uh, and all the little details about things I said, I talked early, and uh, and did, and that, my goodness, that was a revelation because this is the woman who thought I had failed her, <laughs> uh-huh. and, and so I that was really I. I will read that periodically. Hmm. It gave me, I cried my eyes out. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. yeah. yeah that That's really, really nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that came out of, mm. you know, mm-hmm. looking and searching, and that was great. Hmm. Well, I think the thing that struck me was that um, there are patterns that you have in your life that you don't know why, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. when you yeah. think back, um, you realize that, you know, I, m- my sense of worry, which can drive my husband crazy. <laughs> Mine too. Uh, is, I, I thought, yeah, that's probably rooted in those early years. And, mm-hmm. and maybe I really need to work at getting rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster's not always imminent. It's <laughs> not always around the corner. Never yeah. too late. Never too late. No, right. it's never too late. That's right. a wonderful feeling, that it's never too late. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can... Think about mm-hmm. what you're doing and what the roots are. And, and, we, and we can change. And, we and we're change. the elders at the table. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not I'm all believing you. <laughs> hey, if you can change, then we can change. <laughs> right. <laughs> never too late. <laughs> well, I just want you to know that I never would have thought of doing a workshop with this book or that it would have so much meaning to other women and that has been extraordinary for me mm-hmm. because connection to me has probably been the most significant thing in my life and my friends one of my friends keeps telling me that I'm a people person that I just collect people mm-hmm. and I really do care about why people do what they do so um, I'm really glad that this has happened and that you all have helped me and that I'm moving forward with this and I'm so curious to hear other women's stories really, and that's one of the reasons, and to eventually be able to share those stories with yet more women, I think it will be really an exciting new adventure. So thank you all a lot.